Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be comparing two numbers, two radicals. We have the square root of 101 plus the square root of 103 and the square root of 99 plus the square root of 105. And we're going to try to find out which number is larger. I'll be presenting two methods and I think these two methods are entirely different approaches. Okay, great. Let's start with the first method. For my first method, I want to consider a function which I can investigate for maximum, minimum values, increasing and decreasing intervals. So in other words, how can we take these expressions and functionize them? I don't know if that expression is ever used, but hopefully you know what I'm talking about. We're going to turn these into functions. These are constants. How can I express them as points on the graph of a function, in other words? So here's what I'm looking at. 101 and 103, they differ by 2. When then I look at the second number, 99 and 105, they differ, differ by 6. So the difference isn't constant. What is constant? Their sum. Because when one of them decreases by 2, the other one increases by 2. Make sense? So their sum is constant. As you can check, the sum is 2 or 4. So here's my approach. I'm going to define a function f of x. And the first number I'll take to be my x, so the square root of x. What would the next term be? Since these two numbers add up to 2 or 4, if the first number is called x, the second number needs to be 204 minus x. We use this strategy a lot with uh, word problems. Some sometimes they'll tell us, uh, you know, there are two numbers whose sum is 10, and you can immediately say, hey, those numbers are x and 10 minus x. You can also write an equation like x plus y equals 10, but then uh, if you don't solve for y, then you're going to get a system. Make sense? It's a little easier if you stick to a single variable. And in this case, we have to because we're kind of defining a, a function with one variable. Okay? If f of x is defined as such, then we can basically think of these two values as points on the graph of this function. So, for example, square root of 101 plus the square root of 103 would be f at 101. Because if you replace x with 101, that's what you're going to get. Make sense? And then the same thing for the second one. The second number can be considered or written as f of 99. If you go ahead and plug in 99 here and here, you're going to get the exact same thing. Make sense? That's why it's important to understand that the sum of those two numbers is a constant, not their difference. Okay? So far, so good. Now, once we define this function, we can go ahead and investigate it and do a little bit of calculus on it. So don't be scared. We're only going to differentiate and look at a uh, minimum or maximum value. Okay, so let's go ahead and differentiate this function. How do you differentiate the square root of u? You differentiate the inside and divide by 2 times the original function. Easy, right? So f of x is square root of x plus the square root of 204 minus x. And so f prime is going to be the derivative of x, which is 1, by the way. So it's just going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And then plus the derivative of the inside here is negative 1 divided by 2 times the square root of 204 minus x. Of course, that minus sign can be applied here. And then our goal is basically to set this equal to 0. So where f prime is 0, we'll probably get a horizontal tangent where our function will have a maximum point or a minimum point. And we can tell by either the second derivatives. I know some people like to use second derivative, but I like to use a table because table is more visual and kind of allows you to investigate a little further. Anyways, so from here, we basically, by setting these equal to each other, we get square root of x equals the square root of 204 minus x because the numerators are the same. The denominators have both two. We can cancel them out, so on and so forth. From here, we get the following. x equals 204 minus x, which means 2x is equal to 204, and x is equal to 102. Awesome. This basically means that at x equals 102, this function will either have a maximum or a minimum. How can we tell? Let's go ahead and make a table. All right, great. So our table is going to have two rows. If you count the top row, then it'll be three rows. We'll put the x in the top, and then we're going to have the f prime here and the f here. 
And then we're going to put our critical value, which is x equals 102. That's basically where the first derivative is 0. Or some people say the first derivative vanishes, okay, or disappears. But they just say vanish. They don't say disappear. So now we're going to go ahead and look at the behavior of the function uh, or the derivative function to the right and to the left of 102. So to understand how that function behaves, you have to look at the derivative without setting it equal to 0, of course. So what happens, for example, at 0, uh, like 0? Zero. 0 is to the left of 102, so I can kind of use it as a test value. If I replace x with 0, actually, I shouldn't use 0. I don't know why I said 0. It's undefined. Maybe use 1. OK, great. So let's use 1. If x equals 1, then maybe we can go ahead and use something like plug it in, and it's going to give me 1 half minus 1 over 2 times the square root of 203. I don't know the value of 203, but I don't care about it because what I need is this is a smaller number, right? That means the first derivative is going to be positive at x equals 1, which means it's going to be positive on this interval. All I need is a test value, and then obviously it's going to be minus because it's going to change value or, or the sign. Now, this means that our function is going to be increasing and then decreasing because when the first derivative is positive on an interval, that means the function is increasing and vice versa. Now, we have a maximum at 102. That's important. You know why? Because f is increasing on negative infinity to 102, and 101 and, 10, uh, and 99 are both less than 102. What, why does that matter? Because... Uh, on that interval, including these values, our function is always going to be increasing. And that just means that f of 101 is going to be greater than f of 99 because the greater x produces greater y. Make sense? Because f is increasing. Allow me to write some shortcuts. Okay, from here we get the following. Remember what f of 1, f of f 101 was? Okay, it's kind of hard to say, right? What was f, o, f 101? It was this number, the square root of 101 thing. Okay, so this means the square root of 101 plus the square root of 103 is greater than the square root of 99 plus the square root of 105. So the larger number is this one. We have a winner, but let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is also very cool. But you're going to decide which method you like better, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and set these numbers equal to A and B. Because what I want to do with them, sometimes people will just write these numbers and put a question mark between them and then kind of keep doing some stuff, but I don't like that. I just kind of like to go algebraic like this. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and square each number. A squared is going to be 101 plus 103 plus 2 times the square root of 101 times 103. And then B squared is just going to be uh, 99 plus 105 plus 2 times... 99 times 105. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and compare a squared and b squared, but let's go ahead and simplify a little further. a squared can be now written as 204 plus 2 times the square root of 101 times 103, and b squared is 204. Notice that they have the same piece, but then there's a different piece. So what really makes the difference is we have to compare these two pieces because I want to understand which number is larger. So we kind of need to compare 101 times 103 and 99 times 105. Let me tell you. We can also set up a function for this and do it that way, but let me show you something a little faster. It's going to come up the same uh, thing. Here, the sum of these two numbers is constant. You know that, right? When the sum is constant, the product is going to be largest when the factors are the closest, which means when they're equal. In other words, you'll see that these numbers are going to be, uh, in other words, 102 times 102 is going to give you the, the maximum value. And these are smaller than that, right? So you can basically see that uh, to make the product larger, you have to increase these numbers. But this is closer to this. Make sense? Therefore, 101 times 103 is just going to be greater than the other number. So it'll be our winner again. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and actually we're not done yet. Sorry, <laughs> I just didn't realize. Okay, so why does it show that? Because a squared is greater than b squared, which implies a is greater than b. Again, that brings us to this point. Anyways, I'll see you next time.
拜拜。